We are now in a position to find a planet's orbital path for any given position and velocity at perihelion. From now on, instead of designating the position of a planet using vector notation, we will simply use d, indexed according to the planet's angle of azimuth, to indicate the planet's distance from the Sun. As before, we will place the planet, when at perihelion, at zero degrees azimuth. The special case of D naught will be designated DP as shown here. Similarly, the distance at aphelion will be designated DA. We start with DP and we ask the following question. If the orbit were a circular orbit, what would be the planet's velocity? The answer to that question will provide us with a helpful reference vector, which we will call vref. In fact, we previously derived the formula we need when we were analyzing circular, circular orbits. Shown here, it tells us that the magnitude of vref equals the square root of the quantity g times m divided by dp. Now, let's say that the velocity given to us, vmax, is somewhat greater than the reference velocity. We can write it as follows. The magnitude of vmax equals the quantity 1 plus delta times the magnitude of v ref, where the quantity 1 plus delta is greater than 1 and less than the square root of 2. The reason for the constraints on the value of delta will become clear later. We immediately know the specific angular momentum of the planet. Because phi always equals 90 degrees at perihelion, h equals the magnitude of v max times dp. Now we can substitute this expression for the magnitude of v max, and we get this expression here. But we can go further and substitute this expression for v reference, and we get this. We can simplify uh, this part of the expression, and we get this. And this we will continue to use as we go forward. Now that we have an expression for both Vmax and for H in terms of dp, we are ready to define the dv d theta circle that is specific for our hypothetical orbit. Recall that the value of dv d theta gives us the radius and it equals the quantity g times m divided by h. Substituting the expression for h in the top equation for h in the bottom equation, we get this expression. And using a little algebraic manipulation, we can simplify this to the following. To this expression. So now we have an expression for the radius of our dv d theta circle, a dv d theta circle that is specific to our planet, given its um, Vmax at perihelion and its distance from the sun at perihelion. And the expression is in terms of db 
and delta. Those are the two variables here. And a moment ago, I said that we also had an, expre had an expression for v, for v max in terms of dp. And let's just review what that is. Uh, we said that the magnitude of v max equals 1 plus delta times the magnitude of v ref. And remember, delta was some arbitrary uh, uh, number with certain constraints because we were um, told that uh, the magnitude of Vmax was that much more than the magnitude of V reference. So we also know from our analysis of circular orbits, and remember, again, v, v ref is uh, the velocity of a hypothetical planet at the same a distance from the sun, but uh, which has a circular orbit. And from our analysis of circular orbits, we could therefore say that um, uh, the magnitude of V ref equals gm over dp. And so combining those two equations, we see that V max, its magnitude, that is, is 1 plus delta times the square root of gm over dp. And so right away you can see, when you compare these two equations, um, they share some similar terms, which leads us to wonder whether uh, we can get somewhere by combining the two. And indeed we can, as the next slide shows. The question arises, what is the ratio of the magnitude of Vmax to R? Look at the two expressions for a moment and see if you can see the answer. It is the quantity 1 plus delta squared. Let's take the expression on the right-hand side and expand it and multiply both sides by r to give us an expression for the magnitude of v max in terms of the radius of the dv d theta circle. We now make a substitution to simplify things later on. Let e prime equal 2 delta plus delta squared. Then we can say that the magnitude of Vmax equals the quantity 1 plus e prime times r, or r plus e prime times r. Now you may wonder why I have chosen to use the designation e prime. Well, it's a little bit of foreshadowing. I am suggesting to you that e prime may in fact turn out to be the uh, eccentricity of an elliptical orbit but we're not there yet. Um, that remains to be shown. But uh, just to uh, provide you with a little bit of a clue here, without um, assuming anything, we're going to uh, uh, label that um, expression uh, 2 delta plus delta squared as e prime. Now we are ready to construct the dv d theta circle specific to our planet's orbit. Of course, uh, right now it looks like any other dv d theta circle, but I have uh, shown the radius r, and we know that r equals gm divided by h. And h we have an expression for in terms of uh, the distance at perihelion. Now we draw in uh, V max, and it is pointing straight up towards uh, zero degrees uh, angle of azimuth because the planet at this point in time, 
when it has a velocity equal to Vmax is at zero degrees angle of azimuth. Notice that the length of Vmax is clearly greater than R. In fact, because we know that the magnitude of Vmax is r plus e prime r, we can break it down into those two segments as shown here in the diagram. Now we draw in Vmin, which is a simple thing to do. It's pointing straight down towards a theta of 180 degrees and indicating that the planet at that point in time, when its velocity is v min, is at an angle of azimuth of 180 degrees. And if the magnitude of v max equals r plus e prime r, then it should be readily apparent that the magnitude of v min must be r minus e prime r. Dividing one equation by the other, we get that the magnitude of v min divided by the magnitude of v max equals the quantity r minus e prime r divided by the quantity r plus e prime r. So we can express the magnitude of v min in terms of the magnitude of v max as shown here. So let's set this equation here for a moment and bring in an equation from earlier. Recall that uh, h equals the magnitude of v min times dA, which equals the magnitude of v max times dP. Now, we can substitute this expression for v min over here, and what do we get? We get r minus e prime r over r plus e prime r times dA times v max equals v max magnitude times dp. Well, of course, the v maxes cancel out, and we simply get r minus e prime r over r plus e prime r times dA equals dp. Or better yet, dA equals the quantity r plus e prime r divided by r minus e prime r, all times dp. Now this is a very important formula, so I've moved it down into the left-hand corner where we can keep track of it, and we'll come back to that later. I'll even put a little red box around it. Now let's take a moment and review a slide that we looked at previously. Uh, we started off uh, just discussing definitions and relationships of ellipses um, in general uh, outside the realm of astronomy, but we did use one term here that we use specifically in, with regard to an orbit, dp, and of course uh, then da also came up. But otherwise, we're just talking about ellipses in general here. Uh, you could say, uh, again, if the orbit turns out to be an ellipse, it's kind of interesting to look at these two um, expressions. And what we can say is that just from inspection, it should be obvious that dA plus dP equals 2A and dA minus dp equals 2ae. Therefore, dA minus dp 
over dA plus dP simply equals E. Now, we've just shown that this expression here on the right is one way of expressing the eccentricity of an ellipse, of any ellipse. Now, let's make a wild guess and say that the planetary orbit that we've been talking about all along here is in fact an ellipse. Then we ought to be able to substitute this expression into the equation up here, and we might learn something interesting. So let's try it. It's going to involve a little bit of algebra, but we have a, another expression for dA, and it is r plus e prime r over r minus e prime r times dp, and that's minus dp from here, all over dA plus dA plus dp, which is r plus e prime r over r minus e prime r times dp plus dp. Well, you can see what happens. We're going to be able to factor out a dp uh, in both the numerator and the de denominator. And so we're left with r plus e prime r over r minus e prime r minus 1. And that same quantity plus 1 in the denominator. Uh, now these dps cancel out. And if we want to simplify uh, the fractions in both the numerator and the denominator, we, we can rewrite them like this. r plus e prime r minus 1 minus e prime r all over r minus e prime r. That's just the numer numerator. And in the denominator, we get r plus e prime r plus r minus e prime r all over r minus e prime r. Well, uh, if we do away with the parentheses here, we have to change this minus sign to a plus sign. And if we do away with the parentheses down here, we don't have to change the sign. So look what happens. The denominator of the numerator cancels out with the denominator of the denominator, so to speak. And up here, you've got an r minus an r. And you simply wind up up here with 2 e prime r. And then down here, this e prime r cancels out with this one. And you're left with 2 r. And now look what happens. This simplifies to e prime. So we've just shown that, again, if our orbit is an ellipse, then this expression here is equal to e prime, but that means e prime uh, is the eccentricity of the ellipse if this orbit is an ellipse. Now we still have yet to prove that, but now uh, we, can, we can start to think in terms of, aha, if it is an ellipse, we know what the uh, value of 
uh, E prime is because we already uh, did that long ago. We, we use that as a substitution for 2 delta plus delta squared. Okay, now would be an excellent time to look at the general equation for any ellipse in one of its standard forms in polar coordinates where uh, we have it right here. And again, uh, in standard form in most textbooks, you'll see an R where this D is, but we're using D partly because we're also using, uh, one of the other reasons I don't want to use R here is because we're using R to represent the radius of our dv d theta circle. So um, that's fine in, in standard form if we understand that. d is simply the distance from any point on the ellipse to one of the foci at a particular angle theta. So that's the dependent variable in this case. The independent variable is theta, which is over here. And there's two parameters. There's the eccentricity e, and uh, if we are correct uh, in, in guessing that our orbit is an ellipse, if we can prove that, we would expect to see that E doesn't, again, equal E prime. Uh, or to put it another way, we should see an E prime wherever we see an E in this general equation. And there's a second parameter, A, which is, the, of course, the semi-major axis. But let's see if we can um, get rid of the A and introduce DP instead, because that's what we're given as one of the initial conditions. So, uh, in fact, we can do that pretty easily. We know that 2A equals DA plus DP. And according to this formula here, that means we're dealing with 1 plus, or r plus e prime r over r minus e prime r dp plus dp. And we can factor out the dp, and we're left with this quantity here plus a 1. Let me take a shortcut here, and the way we would simplify that mixed fraction would be to say, okay, on the left here we have r plus e prime r still plus r minus e prime r all over r minus e prime r. Uh, So uh, that would be dp plus 2r over r times 1 minus e prime. And that all equals 2a. Well, we, the 2s cancel out, and this r cancels out. So a simply equals dp divided by 1 minus e prime. So, we found that A equals DP divided by 1 minus E prime, and we want to hold on to that finding. So, let's get rid of the messy algebra, clean this slide up a little bit, and go on to the next step. So, uh, if we want to get rid of A and instead insert an, an expression in terms of DP, we would plug this into here. But look what happens. Then we would have, just looking at the numerator here, then we would have dp over 1 minus e times 1 minus e squared. But that is 1 plus e times 1 minus e. So the 1 minus e cancels out. So long story short, in terms of, of, of the um, variables that we are using in our orbit, 
we might expect d theta to look like this. d theta equals dp times 1 plus e all over the same denominator, 1 plus e cosine theta.